What's up everybody, my name is Jay and welcome back to my tech vault. Today we're going to be talking about some rumors, some really exciting rumors that I really hope are true. Why? Well, because when I first tell them to you, you're going to be like, okay, that's kind of cool. And then when I start explaining some of the background story, you're really going to start getting excited along with me. So, I want to talk about first this Ryzen, or this Ryzen 3000 series, these processors are coming out. So there's been a rumor um, that I'm going to explain what the rumor is and you know you can make your own judgments from that but I'm going to start explaining what it really means. So there's this rumor that the Radeon Technologies Group, AMD's graphics department, got a hold of one of the engineering samples that they basically tested it and it had a 4.5 all-core boost, that's the rumor, and a 4.0 gigahertz base clock and you're going, well, that's kind of disappointing. I was hoping for something higher. And now before you make that thought, let me explain a little something. Back when we were just getting rumors of the Ryzen 2700X, we were getting, you know, this, it finally came out with around a 4.3, 4. I think it's 4.25 gigahertz um, boost clock on all cores. And it's, it might be single core. Don't get, don't quote me on that, on both of those. Um, but it ended up with a two or five or four point three gigahertz max bo uh, boost clock and so now you know three months before that happened we were getting rumors that it was just going to be four gigahertz and four gigahertz is what we were seeing in the engineering samples now obviously this is a smaller manufacturing process which means we we'll actually get better performance and probably better improvements um, so if you were to you know continue that on to what we might see we might even get up to 4.8 gigahertz if you were just to include the fact that we uh, just what we just saw in the last generation with shrinking the die size a little bit and so, as we're shrinking the die size a substantial bit compared to what it was before, we might even see better performance and better clock speeds than that. Now, if you also tack in the fact that this is 7 nanometers, it's going to be less um, power hungry, uh, it will be cooler, it will, it will basically like run cooler, obviously it will be cooler, but we're not going to get there. And then of course it will just be more efficient overall. You'll get a lot more overclocking power out of it too, which really does start to raise the question, if you're going to get a 3.8, 3.7, you know, boost clock, or not through 4.7, 4.8 boost clock, overclocking is going to be even substantially better. And now I know we have the, you know, the 9900K that came out and everyone's going, oh, that's, a, you know, such a nice processor, it's a high-end gaming processor, but 600 bucks. And if this comes out, it's probably going to fall right now where the 2700X is maybe a little bit more expensive. And it's going to fall in right in that area. So, you know, if you're th sitting there and there's been a lot of comments about like, oh, AMD needs to work on their clock speeds or their IPC and all that stuff. It's, we really do have to see what happens when it comes out. But like just starting from the first rumors we have and the first rumors we had of the 2700X and the improvement we saw over there, which was 0.3 gigahertz. If we just see the same amount of improvement, we're still looking at 4.8 gigahertz. And, you know, since it's a smaller, dec or like, you know, it's a more substantial decrease in the size of the die, we will probably even get better performance out of that, possibly 4.9 gigahertz, which that's like almost, that's pretty dang impressive now in the fact that they've shrunk in it and we're getting better clock speeds. So what I really do hope is that AMD at least, of course, allows overclocking, that's what they will, which that really means that we may be even getting 5.0 gigahertz. If you overclock, 5.1, 5.2. Now that's really stretching, and that's so stretched, and I, I'll, I'll admit that right now, it's really far out there, because it's hard to tell this far out. But if we're just assuming that, you know, we have that 0.3 gigahertz increase, and you can overclock at 0.2 like we've done in the past, maybe, that's obviously some, that's a little pushing it as well, uh, but this is seven nanometers, it's supposed to be smaller manufacturing, probably supposed to be better overclocking, you might actually be able to get five gigahertz out of it, which if you look at what, you know, Intel's offering that, yeah, you can overclock it a little bit, 5.2 on air, which, yeah, it's possible, but they their manufacturing process is already starting to get pushed to the limit. They're on so many refreshes that it's really getting pushed to the limit. Meanwhile, AMD has shrunk in their manufacturing process half of what Intel is. I would really be surprised to not see something that was on par uh, with what Intel has. So... You know, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments, guys. I really want to see what you know your thoughts are about this processor, uh, about these Ryzen 3000 series. I did a video talking about some rumors about a 16-core uh, AM4 socket processor that's really going to be exciting. Obviously, we won't have the same thing. This is for the 8-core 16-thread um, processor, which I obviously would expect this to be on. I wouldn't expect it to be on the 16-core 32-thread uh, if that comes out. And I think what the, the main story of this video is that if, you know, you're interested in getting a gaming processor, I mean, yes, the Ryzen 3, or 2, huh, the second gen Ryzen 2000 series, 
Okay. The rest of 2000 series is a really good deal at the moment. Um, but I think there'll be an even better processor for gaming, and I'm really excited to see the point where Intel and AMD are equal in clock speeds, because that will really, really say that AMD has finally got something one up on Intel, which I think, no matter who you are as a person, no matter, you know, if you're an Intel or AMD fanboy, uh, I just think that having some equal, something to put Intel on the same page with AMD, and you know, I think that will encourage each company to actually uh, even work harder and have more better products, which I think anyone out there can you know, say that competition is good for the consumer. Um, but I know there's a lot of hard work that goes into each of these processors and it's definitely showing um, on both companies, but I do think that just the price point that AMD will be able to reduce this at will mean that we'll get something that will be very comp competitive and I'm really interested to see what it looks like. And that kind of answers all our questions of you know, where's the higher clock speeds here they are. I hope they're coming, and uh, we'll have to see. But as I said, let me know your thoughts, comments, stuff down below. Uh, check out my channel for other cool tech-related news, videos, leaks, uh, builds, unboxings, reviews, all that stuff. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.